How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Matt's Beer Reviews. Back with yet another review. Another mystery beer. Love me some mystery beers. Um, started doing a mystery beer series a while ago. My buddy Keith kind of dropped off some beers. He was going to drop some off. I asked him to wrap them up so I wouldn't know what they were. And he did that. And now this is the fifth series that I'm doing. I've had a bunch of people, awesome people, send me awesome beers. This one comes from an old friend, uh, Average Joe, Average Troll Joe from Buffalo. Thank you very much, dude, for sending these off. These are fantastic. And this one is could be a shelf turd, might not be. Because the name of this one is, and I like this because it almost reads like it's an infinite reading beer. It says, mystery shelf turds are the best mystery shelf turds are the best mystery shelf turds. And you keep rotating it around and it never fucking ends. Now, is it a shelf turd? Isn't it? I don't fucking know. All I know, it is wrapped in brown paper. There's a little key here that I keep forgetting to fucking read because I'm a jerk. And it was picked for me to drink tonight by my lovely girlfriend, Liesl, who's sitting behind a camera right now. Ming faces at me, trying to do things to distract me because she's pretty good at that stuff. So, let's crack into this fucker. See what she's got. She's angry because I said her name. Let's see what we got here. This shit looks pretty damn fucking delicious so far. I'm going to pour the whole thing in here. Let's do it. Let's pour the whole thing in there. Give the people what they want. It's a pretty horrible pour, but I poured it all nonetheless. Uh, three fingers. Infinitely compact head on there. I mean, you could literally dance on top of that son of a bitch. I bet if I took a little cap here, look at how... Dense that thing is. Oh, look, the cap's floating. It wants to sink in there, though. Take that out of there. Anyway, that was fun for a half second. And, uh, yeah, as far as the beer actually goes, um, it's got a beautiful hipstery haze to it. I mean, this is what people want. This is exactly the haziness that people look for in a beer. Um, it's bright, uh, I was going to say bright, dark orange, because those that makes sense. It's got this vibrant orangeness to it, but it also has this kind of density to it. If you actually look at it, it's bright, but the core is dark, which means it's it's dense enough, turbid enough, to where light can't penetrate clean through and meet in the middle to the point where it's the same level of light. So you actually get this kind of dark kind of core to it that makes you think, oh my God, this thing's so dense and so juicy and so delicious, um, which it kind of just looks that way. So as far as this beer goes right now, it looks exactly like every neck beardy fucking hipster flannel wearing chair person that waits in line 19 hours wants beer to look. So let's see if we can uh, get a nose on this some bitch. Malt Ford. Sweet Malt Ford, Honey Malt Ford. Peaches and, and citrus. You're getting like the bittering from the citrus. You're getting the uh, kind of nice, uh, sweet juiciness from the peaches. Yeah, it definitely smells like beer. Uh, something that I've had before, but I can't put my finger on. Yeah. It's 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 an it's double IPA IPA broaching double I assume it's a double IPA um, that is definitely a bit old school that it's malt forward that was kind of honey vibes and getting there it's pretty much just like it smells like a really I don't know I don't know what it smells like that's the thing I'm kind of lost for words right now yeah. Sweet honey malt, sweet pit, uh, citrus, a little bit of um, sweet peaches with sweet citrus with a little bit of bittering, a little bit of kind of pithiness to it, and it just smells fucking awesome. It smells really good. Hopefully, this is a beer that I can pick up with the shelf ninety nine percent of the time because that would be fantastic. Because Shelf turds are the best mystery shelf turds are the best mystery beers or shelf turds. I don't know. Cheers. The mouth is where it fucking loses me a little bit. The nose is fantastic. Nose is off the hook. Delicious. 
you're like smell it and you're like oh my god this is gonna be the best thing i ever had in my life in the mouth you get a lot of what you get in the nose but it's just so much more muted than it is in in, in the actual nose itself yeah it just lacks it just lacks so on the nose like i said i said nose twice earlier if you're paying attention um in the nose you get all those notes that i was talking about you're getting that sweet honey malt you're getting those kind of peaches with that kind of candied kind of citrus with a little bit of pithiness and again the honey malt but in the mouth you're getting all that but a watered down version of that i just want that to be I want that to be, I was looking at the date there, see if there was one. I want it to be as vibrant as it was in the nose that it, it, it could be in the mouth, but it's just not there. Now, does age play a part in it? That's why I looked at the bottom. It could. But it's still delicious. It's still fantastic. But it lacks the punch, the vibrancy, the mouthfeel. Looking at it, you're like, oh my God, I'm going to this really nice creamy kind of frothy delicious kind of ipa double ipa it still lacks in that too so it's everything you get visually and in your nose it just muted it actually in the mouth and the taste it's still delicious but it just kind of like lets you down a little bit let's put it that way so yeah to recap you know peaches citrus um more like fruity peaches candied citrus um honey malt in the nose and still in the mouth just kind of muted so let's see what it is it is a shelf turd for this little reveal thing off here let's put it on my nose so i don't forget it didn't stick so i'm a greasy son of a bitch <laughs> anyway oh man i know i'm gonna know what this is i assume it's i'm gonna know what it is based off of it being a shelf turdy beer but who actually knows? Okay, let's wrap this out. Oh, it's Westbrook Brewing. Okay. We have their Two Claw. Do, 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 do. Westbrook Brewing. God damn. Black gaffer's tape here. Joe, how dare you wrap stuff up and send it to me? All perfect and stuff. Anyway, there we go. You're here, Westbrook Brewing Company. Um, it's their rye. I didn't pick up any of the fucking rye. Fucker. I suck at this. I should stop doing this. Anyway, it's their rye India Pale Ale. 7% alcohol by volume. Um, brewed and canned by Westbrook Brewing Company. Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. It says here, you know the old saying, two claws are more than one. The big brother of one claw is hev heavily dry hopped for an intense blast of juicy and tropical hop flavors. Uh, malts, two row, rye, wheat, oats, hops, Yes. Store cold, drink fresh. He's as intentional. Um, so yeah, I, I totally skipped out in the ride. Now that I read it, I actually can be like, okay, yeah, that kind of makes the spiciness there that I did not talk about at all in any form or fashion. I assumed it was an age thing. Um, sometimes rye, for, especially for me, comes off as a little bit of ghost of hops past. That's why I was looking at the date. I was like, okay, this might have a little bit of age on it. Uh, I know that hops kind of skew, especially if it's an aged beer, whether it be a barley wine or a double IPA or an IPA. Those hops, um, it, when they get older, they kind of get a little bit similar to rye for me. So that's why I went no rye on this. went a little bit more of kind of like I'm guessing it was aged. But that's just me making excuses for things that I shouldn't make excuses for. Um, it's a fun beer. It's nice. I'd love to know a date on it. It actually doesn't have that on there. Maybe it has this on this thing that I forget about to read about all the time. So, let's see. Ripped part of it off there, so... Might be gone forever. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Okay. Um, it says down here, let's see. 7% alcohol by volume. Canned on date late January. Maybe one of his cans said late January. So uh, this one is their new year-round releases, but it was relatively easy to find as far as availability goes. $14 for a four-pack. Information. This is the big brother of their One Claw, which is a rye pale ale. They say this one is hazy and uses Galaxy, Izaka, and Mosaic hops. I haven't tried it yet, but I heard good things. Um, so yeah, 
Yeah, confuse the rye with age. Um, and it's yeah, nice beer, but the nose definitely outplays the actual mouth in this. And uh, yeah, it's been a while since I had a Westbrook beer, so. Anyway, so let's talk about it. It's one of the better um, pale ales I've had so late? No. Uh, and the nose, it abs absolutely, without a doubt, shows and proves, but in the mouth, it kind of lets me down a little bit. Let's put it that way. Uh, value and availability, we already read that, and just say if you like what we like this. Uh, if you like aged IPAs or you like uh, rye IPAs, like I said, like I kind of confused the age and a rye thing together. I can make sense of it. I can kind of excuse myself for that. I can make excuses to why I'd screw that up. I'm just trying to save face here a little bit. But anyway, um, if you like those kind of beers, if you like interesting rye beers, if you like rye beers in general, if you like me putting the word rye in front of any other thing I say right now in order to kind of make it make sense, and if you like, um, you know, beers and stuff. And you'll like this one. So there you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. If you did or you didn't, anywhere in between, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Untapped, Massive Beers, and all four of those places. And yeah, another review down. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a nice Ryan IPA right now. And hopefully see you next time. Cheers.